Good morning. Welcome to Gladeville United Methodist Church. I am so glad that you are worshiping online with us this morning. Today we're talking about Jesus calling Nathaniel to follow him. When did you first hear or sense your call to, to follow Jesus and be his disciple? Here we are. Something got hold of your heart, your mind, your hopes, and your soul, and for some reason you kept coming back to follow him. Keep worshiping with us online. Keep Jesus reached across the time and space of life and eternity to make himself real to us. So the choir will bring us into worship this morning. prepare our hearts to go to the Lord in prayer. Gracious Heavenly God, in the quietness of this moment, we ask that you do touch our hearts. Open our hearts to your leading. Open our hearts to your call on our lives. We ask, Lord, this morning, especially after everything that has gone on for the last couple of weeks, that we pray to you to heal our nation physically, our nation emotionally, and our nation spiritually. And as we come upon the inauguration that is coming this week. We pray to you, Lord, for peace. We pray, pray to you, Lord, for leadership that you will just touch the leaders, the ones that are, are leaving office and the ones that are coming into office. Forgive us, Lord, this morning when we are quick to judge. Forgive us, Lord, whenever we let Satan step into our lives and that he has a part of our the way we think and the way we act. We ask, Lord, this morning that you put a protective hedge around those that we know and love and put a protective hedge around our school children, our elderly those who do not know you yet as Lord and Savior of their life, we ask, Lord, that this morning that you would, you would just touch them and move them to come to know you. Forgive us, Lord, when we aren't the people or the church that we should be. And Lord, as the numbers of corona deaths and the number who are testing positive grow, we just put this into your hands too and Lord allow us to do what we need to do to keep ourselves safe and to keep those around us safe and this morning Lord as we go through the remainder of this service please touch and heal us strengthen us and comfort us in your blessed name we pray amen Our choir has an anthem.
Our scripture reading this morning is John, the first chapter, verses 43 through 51. And Rick is going to read that for us this morning. Thank you. The next day, Jesus decided to leave for Galilee. Finding Philip, he said to him, follow me. Philip, like Andrew and Peter, was from the town of Bethsaida. Philip found Nathanael and told him, we have found the one Moses wrote about in the law and about whom the prophets also wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Nazareth, can anything good come from there? Nathanael asked. Come and see, said Philip. When Jesus saw Nathanael approaching, he said to him, here truly is an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. How do you know me? Nathanael asked. Jesus answered, I saw you while you were still under the fig tree before Philip called. Then Nathanael declared, Rabbi, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. Jesus said, you believe because I told you I saw you under the fig tree. You will see greater things than that. He then added, very truly I tell you, you will see heaven open. And the angels of God descend, ascending and descending on the Son of Man. These are the words of God for the people of God. Praise be to God. Nathaniel Hawthorne is probably the most famous Nathaniel that, that I know. He was an American novelist who wrote The Scarlet Letter. You probably had to read that in school, I did. But then there was Nathaniel Adams Cole, other words known, other ways known, as Nat King Cole. He was a famous American jazz singer and a piano player. He acted in films, in TV, Broadway, and was the first African American to host a TV series. His daughter re-released a duet with him after his death in 19, 1991 called Unforgettable, which through technology allowed them to sing. And then, as I did my search, research, I found there was a Nathaniel P. Banks, who was a professional politician and a Union general during the Seven War, Civil War. He began as general over West Point and was the first professional politician to be governor of Massachusetts. Then there was Nathaniel Lord Britton, who was an American botanist who founded the New York Botanical Garden. And then there was Nathaniel Wayne Hale, otherwise known as Nate Dogg. He was Snoop Dogg's cousin and he was a rapper. And you may want to dismiss this one because he was a rapper, but listen to this. He was also honorably discharged from the US Marine Corps and his dad was a minister. That name, Nathaniel is a name that means God has given. Nathanael came from Cana of Galilee and was one of the first disciples of Jesus Christ and is mentioned here in John 1 and then again in John 21. And he has another name that I bet you didn't know. He also went by Bartholomew. So to get to where we are today, let's look at how John 1 has played out first. John 1 introduces us as Jesus is the Son of God. John 1 introduces us to John the Baptist, whose job was to point the way as Jesus is the Savior. John 1 introduces Andrew and Peter, the first disciples of Jesus. And now, John 1, in its last verses, introduces us to Philip, and more importantly, to Nathaniel, who we're talking about this morning. So Nathaniel is mentioned all of six times in the Bible, five of which are right here in John 1. What can we tell about this man, and what can he teach us? Timothy 3, 16 and 17 says this, all scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness, so that the man of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. So that's what we're doing. 
we are going to dig into the scripture and see what God teaches about us and about how he equips us. For we are going to find two important lessons that I have found anyway and challenges for us as we figure out these few verses, these passages about Nathaniel. This is what they are, two things. Nathaniel was a man of truth, and Nathaniel was a man of prayer and devoted to God. One of the things that I noticed about Nathaniel is that the things that Jesus mentions about him. He was a man who was sincere and truthful, truthful in his opinions. He mentions in verse 46 that nothing good could ever come out of Nazareth. You see, Nazareth was just a small backwater town with not too much in it. And I can imagine Jesus thinking when Nathaniel said, what good can come out of, out of Nazareth? Well, Nathaniel, you probably aren't wrong about that. Perhaps being a little more tactful in how you said it, but perhaps you aren't wrong. Nazareth was pretty much famous for being Jesus' hometown, and that was it. But Jesus says about Nathanael that he is a true Israelite in whom there is nothing false. Jesus prized that Nathanael was a man of truth. God is truth. God wants his people to claim to be his people to tell the truth. We live in a world of fake news. You've heard that fake news Two words forever. Half the things posted on Facebook are, aren't even true. Sometimes when somebody posts something with a couple of clicks, I can find out, well, that wasn't true. It was only half the story. Ha, huh, but who cares? They post it anyway. It's false. Who cares? Why don't we care when something that was posted is false? Well, I think it's because we have become comfortable with the, just the lack of truth, the loss of truth, and lying and shading things to look a certain way is what we've come to just be used to. But God's people are people of truth. Truth is an essential part of Christian faith that we process. You see, one of the big ten, you know, the commandments, is not to bear false witness. Let's not forget that Jesus calls himself the truth in John 4, 14, 6. You don't even want to look up what, how Jesus, or excuse me, you don't even want to look up to see what Revelation 21, 8 says about liars and who they are lumped with. Well, maybe you do want to look it up because you may want to know that. But truth is part of Christianity. God created the heaven and earth. That's tr the truth. God wants a personal relationship with us. That's the truth. Jesus loves you. That's the truth. Jesus died on the cross for the expiation of our sins and was raised from the dead so we too could have eternal life. That is truth. The Bible is truth. God is all-powering, all-knowing, and boundless in love, and that is the truth. You see, truth is part of Christianity in its foundation. The truth should be one of the major character traits of the people who claim Jesus as Lord and Savior. So what do we do with this truth thing? What do we do with this? Well, I think first of all, we need to understand ourselves. You need to know you, to know your strength and your weaknesses and be truthful with yourself and others who you have relationships with. I guess I would say as a bottom line, don't pretend to be something that you're not. Oh, 
also meet any commitments or promises that you have made. If you say yes, let it be yes. If you say no, let it be no. And if you tell someone you're going to help them with a project or you're going to join them or you're going to do whatever, then for heaven's sakes, do it. Well, how are you doing in this area of truth? Are you a person who values truth in yourself and in others? Or is this an area that you need to work on? Be truthful with yourself. Examine yourself. Now, that was the first thing that I noticed about Nathaniel, was he was a man of truth. The second thing I noticed about Nathaniel is that he is a man of prayer. Now, I know what you're thinking. Prayer, that wasn't even a word that was used in the text this morning. But it takes a little bit of background for you to understand what is happening in verse 47 and 48. You see, it was common in, in Jesus' day for a man to go off by himself to lonely places and, and pray under trees. It was kind of a cultural sign that someone was spending time with God. An example, a common, I mean, a, a, a more traditional explanation of that or example would be if I said to you I'm going to Barnes and Noble well you would automatically know that I'm probably going to look for a book because we know that's what happens that's what goes on at Barnes and Noble the word book doesn't appear in anything that I have said but you know what I was going to do and where I was going to go Another example, if I told you that I was going to the DMV and I got done in 10 minutes, your automatic response would be shock and surprise because we all know if you go to the DMV that you often are there for a very long time. How do we know this? Because of our culture and our experiences. And that's kind of similar to how it was with Nathaniel under a particular tree, a fig tree, spending time with God. What's amazing here and amazing to Nathaniel was that Jesus saw him under that fig tree. Jesus knew what he'd been doing under that fig tree. He even knew what kind of tree it was to tell Nathaniel it was a fig tree. Nathaniel was spending time with God by himself, alone, and no one else was around. The only one who knew what he was doing or thinking was God. Nathaniel exclaims that Jesus is the Son of God because Nathaniel considered it divine knowledge about Jesus knowing where he was and what he'd been up to. You see, I see Nathaniel as a man who was seeking God in prayer. Jesus knew this about him and called him to have a personal relationship with him and to be a student, to be his disciple. Jesus Christ was the answer to what Nathaniel was seeking. God is found by us when we seek him. Anyway, that's how we know that Nathaniel was praying and spending time with God and seeking out God. Jesus miraculously points that out. So what I would like to do this morning is two things. One, I would like to challenge you to spend time with God and seek him out. Set up a chair or a place somewhere in your house or, or somewhere for prayer and reading the Bible and devotion and, and just do that in this place. I have this little chair in the corner of, of my Kyle's bedroom, 
that is, is my Bible place. It's, it's my place. It's my place to be with God in the house. So what does all this description of Nathaniel in the passage teach us? And what does this passage bring to us? Two things. Nathaniel was a man of truth, and we can be people of the truth. And then Nathaniel was a man of prayer and devoted to God. And we too can be that as well. Let us pray. Lord, this morning, as we leave this service, we ask, Lord, that you would just let us follow in Nathaniel's steps. Let us be people of truth. And let us be devoted in prayer to God. In your blessed name we pray. Amen. Thank you for worshiping with us this morning. Michelle is going to, to take us from worship here out into the world.